But when we're gonna start sinning on solid ground Tell me where my gun is at sinning on solid ground But when we're gonna start Hello, everyone, and welcome to Structure Series number six. And uh, thanks for waiting a, a couple of minutes there. We had a little fun te technical difficulties. You know, we have to have some of that to keep us on our toes. Thank you all for being here. I'm really glad you're all here. Some wonderful guests today. But for, before we introduce them, I just want to remind you all um, that this is an interactive session. So please turn on your chat bar to the right and uh, use it to add any links. Please tell us where you're from, say hello, add your email, websites, anything you wanna share with the group. Um, if you have comments or, or actual real questions for the panel and as we're talking, please put them in the Q&A section so we can monitor those there. Um, and at the end of the session, you can hit the three little dots at the bottom of your chat to save the chat to get all that information that we have there. It will also be on our YouTube uh, channel when this episode goes live. So thank you to Karen Dunn and KMD Pro team, as usual, running a flawless event. The uh, technical difficulties were on my part this time. I want to thank Dan Bones for our opening animation and Greg Brace for our original music score and all of you for being here. You can also uh, watch this video um, about a week after on our YouTube channel, subscribe to that. And we will have, I have a link to that at the very end of the, the episode here. If you have any uh, requests for topics, speakers, put that in the chat and let us know what you're looking for and what you wanna hear more of and what you love and what you want more of. So, all right, let's get started. So I've been getting to know today's guests over the past several months and years, and I love them both. Um, both have a long and growing list of credits to their names and are just like these super talented, giving, sweet people. I was very excited to introduce them to each other, and I'm really looking forward to talking with them today. Um, to just give you a, a mouthful of what these two are both doing, our first guest, Jason Belair. Jason is a design strategist and industrial designer working with both domestic and international brands to uh, develop sustainable processes and design cultures that influence company decisions and support growth. Over the past 25 years, he's designed, developed, and led product management for brands such as Field Peace, Rethink, Targus, Columbia Sportswear, Zen Postures, Go Light, Nature's Lodge, Cotopaxi, La Fuma Group, Bluebird, Sierra Designs, Ultimate Direction, Kelty, Slumberjack, Wenger Swiss Army, Mountain Smith, Browning Camping, and Cabela's. And his designs have won numerous awards, and his Kelty Kids Carrier 3.0 backpack was profiled on the Today Show. He is now the newly elected chair of IDSA, which is the Industrial Designer Society of America, a very, very big organization that does a lot of uh, events and bringing people together uh, in the industrial design world. During his tenure there as director at large for conferences, he helped develop IDSA's new international design conference and has led the speaker and content development that has translated into a successful sellout model still in use today. So with that mouthful, then we also have Lenise Bent, um, who is just such a joy to be around. Um, Lenise has enjoyed a long career as an audio engineer and producer. She's honed her skills on a lot of my favorite records like Asia by Steely Dan, Breakfast in America by Supertramp. And she is the first female engineer to receive a platinum album for Blondie's Auto American, which also has the very first hit rap song with music. Um, called Rapture, which I think most of us know. 
She's also a post-production audio professional for films and animated series and has traveled with DreamWorks all over the world, supervising, uh, you know, like foreign dialogue and, and voc uh, like producing the vocals for animated films like Shrek and Shrek 2. She archives and repairs audio, instructs, consults, and holds workshops for audio students, singers, and songwriters. And she is a member of many groups like uh, Audio Engineer Society, Producers and Engineers Wing of the Recording Academy, and a voting member of NARAS uh, National Academy of Recording Arts and Sciences. She is also a member of Sound Girls, Women's Audio Mission, Women in Music, the prestigious Hollywood Sapphire Group, the Blues Foundation, International Association of Sound Archivists, and the Association of Recording Sound Collectors, and on the board of directors for the music nonprofit Worldwide Musicians United. I wanted to get all that out because these, these two have done a lot already and they keep doing more. So let's talk about uh, where they've been and um, what they think about what they do. So welcome to the screen, Lenise and Jason. Hi there. Hello, hello, hello. welcome, how are you? I'm so good. This is wonderful. Hi, you everyone. Look good. You look great. <laughs> You're doing great, too. You look mm. great, too. <laughs> well, thank you both for being here. I really am happy to have you here. And um, I've already spoken a ton, so I'm, I'm going to have you guys jump right in and introduce yourselves quickly, and then we'll get into our, our first uh, topics. So let's start with you, Lenise. Well, hi, everybody. Um, I'm Lenise Bent. Uh, I'm an engineer, producer, um, audio uh, fanatic, I guess you can call me, because um, it is my passion. And so mm -hmm. anything audio that I can do, I, I pretty much end up doing. And um, uh, so lucky me. And um, uh, I just want to point out, I have to say thank you so much, Michelle, uh, on your music stand is, is Oh, my, yes. You know, yes. One of my biggest claim to fame that I also have to have to is yes. uh, the Blondie Auto American um, album. And it's uh, the important thing about that is it's not just about me, it's about women in the industry. Yeah. Um, I got to um, chip through and crack that floor and to be the um, first woman to make a platinum mm -hmm. record. And thank so, you. Uh, that's a that's a huge honor. And of responsibility i feel and yeah. um so uh but yeah so um so i did that and um uh and uh i'm doing so many other things in fact uh i just signed on last night from a casual phone call to do the live sound for a documentary on uh, women artists and musicians in Venice in the 70s. Oh, awesome. <laughs> oh, so that wow. just happened, you know, mere moments at, ago. So nice. um, yeah, so I'm everywhere. Great. And, oh. and I'm and I'm glad about it. And as soon as pandemic's over, I hope I'm truly everywhere, you know, yes. around the world like I used to be. So um, so uh, that okay. I hope that that gives you some sort of idea. Thank you. Congratulations. That's great. I'm looking forward to that. Eh? Yeah. Well, I have to say too, um, just, I put it there as well. Cause I actually have two copies of that album. I've got my Japanese <gasps> version too. Right? Oh, oh. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank well, you. I'm thank, so honored. Thank you. Because that was actually um, one of my childhood albums. You know, I bought it when it came out. My mom loved it too, but I was probably nine. Probably your grandmother too. Yeah. I was nine or 10 and um, I loved it. And it was my second album. Uh, first one was Pat Benatar. So I was very much about the women's and it, and it shaped music. Jason and I've talked a lot about this. So it, it has shaped my musical tastes forward for a long time. So it oh, means well, a lot thank to me. you. I have yeah. to say both those records were very well produced and engineered. I have to say um, in, in a fashion that, um, not so many know how to go to these mm. days and oh, good. um yeah and a, and the blondie record every single song is different if anybody listens to mm -hmm. it it's the only constant is her voice and some of the musicians in her band but every single song is different so it was a really colorful wonderful major production and i'm it was a blast to do and i'm very awesome. very proud of it well, we'll talk a little bit more about yeah. that later too. So thank you so mm -hmm. much. Now, Jason, top that. 
with your introduction. <laughs> he's, no, he's, got he's got me. He's got me. This guy. Oh, let, let me just say that um, <clears throat> if I'm if I'm being very honest right now, I am very intimidated. Um, I I did my due diligence, <laughs> and Denise awesome, is like uh, she's insanely amazing, and oh. uh, I think I think now <laughs> I have an idea of what I want to be when I grow up. So thank you for inspiring me. That's awesome. Uh, but well, you know what I. Yeah, well, well, me, who am I, right? Um, well, I'm us. Jason. I'm Jason Belair. I go by the Fresh Prince of Belair. Um, so I, <laughs> you know, I Will Smith and I constantly go back and forth about, you know, who really owns the Belair thing. But my, my spelling is a little bit different. But uh, yeah, I, I yeah, well, <laughs> I, I have been um, easier. I have been really uh, living my life in, in a really interesting way. I've been, um, you know, all my life, I've been really trying to figure out who I am versus the way I wound up being. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's been a very interesting and philosophical uh, trip for me. So uh, a lot of my career path is probably as um, schizophrenic as I am, right? It's been <laughs> <laughs> jolting back and forth, going up and down, going backwards, going forwards. But for this point in time, uh, you know, what I think I'd like to communicate is I have been uh, very fortunate uh, because the the, resp the responsibilities that have uh, that I have right now uh, really are are it, it's not it's nothing to really um, bulk at or you know take lightly. Uh, this this moment in my life right now, I feel that I have been prepared to. Uh, really drive a vision and drive um, a new way of thinking or validate ways of thinking that are uh, in an industry that uh, is in a bubble to some extent and has a lot of marketing as well as other influences that tell us what we should think. And so I have spent quite a bit of time analyzing the industry and trying to figure out what it is that they think they believe and what they might really need to believe. Mm -hmm. And so that has uh, brought me down a path of doing um, – doing a lot of research on emotional intelligence and how it pertains to the innovative process or the design process. And so uh, for who I am, I mean, that's that's really uh, important for me to know that I self-taught, you know, all this, all these things I've, I've engaged in all these different conversations, like with you, uh, Michelle, and now with Anise today about mm -hmm. things that I'm going to learn. And then I bring that back to the design community and try to help us all reconcile and, and really think about things in a, in a new way, which a lot of times means we have to deconstruct. So mm -hmm. um, that's my life right there is learning how to, you know, deconstruct, relearn, deconstruct, relearn. And, um, mm -hmm. and it's afforded me some great opportunities and some, you know, people that uh, think they want to work with me and then they realize how authentic and real I am. And then they kind of go, well, that's not the the thing we want to hear. And so it's a very interesting uh, state of mind as well from a career path growth uh, to just, knowing that the successes I've had did come a lot with uh, battling, um, you know, philosophies and, and trying mm -hmm. to instill what, you know, I think is really important. So I, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, m most of my successes um, I don't even think about anymore. I just wonder what, my, what is out there next. And um, mm -hmm. I hope it didn't fuck up behind me, you know, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. So that, that's probably enough about me, right? Mm -hmm. Well, oh, you no. do. You could listen forever, <laughs> ever. And everybody, I want you to know when I'm looking down, I'm taking notes and, and writing down <laughs> keywords that I want to address that are, he's already, you know, has said so much that's so important for what's going on right now. So anyway, yeah. and yeah. all of you out there take notes too. Yeah, thank you. And, yeah. And real quick, uh, Michelle, every time I look down, it's because I'm not wearing pants. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you said you warned you us. Just checking? <laughs> just I brought the sure camera very sure. close for a reason. Okay. Good, good. <laughs> All right. Well, add a little spice to the show here. So I, yeah, I, 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 I think in a lot of ways with structure, um, the topics because because I, Jason and I are similar. We do a lot of facilitating, interviewing, and bringing things together, and. Um, um, that's where, you know, I knew that it was this feeling of, okay, we're both going to interview Lenise. I'm like, no, I'm going to interview you too, Jason, because I need to know more about you, not, a, you know, but, um, but yes, like, like, we're always coming from these places of, of learning, picking apart, connecting. Um, so that you, you know, from structure that I've always brought in, we've always brought in lots of people from outside of our industries to come and share. 
And I really bringing music into the design fold for me was extremely important because design and music are my two passions. So I'm selfish. I want those things to come together because they both mean the world to me and they drive each other. And there's similar lines and things we learn from each other. And the creative process is always an, an artist and what we go through and how we think and how we drive change in the world and how we're always looking forward to the next thing is really important to me. And that was something I really felt between the two of you was that um, you both, you know, Linise, you're a generation ahead of us. You have so much more knowledge than Jason and I too, but we are also imparting well, that on the generations <laughs> but but you're still learning and you're still growing and always you're still doing yeah and that's the sharing back and forth you know that circular feed is what's really important and the fact that you both are also very forward thinking about people and the environment and and processes and, and life and and what where how things are changing and where we're going. And I want to talk about that some more today too, but that's why we're here today to really mm -hmm. connect those ideas and inspire others um, to, to, to move forward. It, and a big piece too, is for people watching this to really go after their dreams, think bigger, look bigger. Um, because sometimes these big note, like working for big brands, working for on big albums like that, it seems unattainable to a lot of people. It seems kind of very, uh, other some, you know, and to show that everyone, all, everything out there that is created and designed is created and designed by somebody, by teams of people, just like anybody. So go out there, dream big, do what you want to do. So, so Absolutely. with, that, yeah, with that, I want to kind of talk about how you guys got to the industries that you're in, the design industry, the music industry. And, um, you know, Linnie, I want to start with you um, and talk about how, what, what drew you to music, like how you got where you got to, uh, in, to, to the industry. Yes. Well, yeah. um, fortunately, I was born into a, a musical family, not uh, typically, uh, they weren't um, professional. Some of them were, but I didn't know it at the time. Mm -hmm. But um, just our family. Von Trapp. <laughs> yeah, yeah Von Trapp. that was me, you know, you know um, anyway, you know some it. of my favorite things. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, uh, so we always have music around, but we always had technology around too. Mm -hmm. My oldest brother worked at Jans Electronics uh, when I was a little girl. We, I grew up in Compton mm -hmm. and um, uh, back in, uh, you know, a long time ago. And um, it was uh, a, a vibrant community, a vibrant school system, and um, they had their own school system. So we had orchestra in the schools. We had art in the schools. We had what was called modern math, which you guys would know. You know, I was learning binomials when nobody knew what a computer was wow. and um, things. Like, they had programs like that. And um, so I was in the uh, youth festival orchestra that went through the whole city and um so i learned how to uh, play together play music together read a score um be competitive uh in a proper way on an authentic way yeah so all these things i learned as a little kid that truly are the reason i was able to get some of the jobs that i got mm -hmm. um especially that dreamworks job but mm -hmm. um uh so i grew up with that and then the technology my brother uh, would bring home amps and, and pieces of electronic gear to work on with tubes in them. And hmm. uh, I was like three years old and he was he was 16 and he'd be wow. working at his bench and I would smell solder and I would smell old tubes warming up. And that those mm -hmm. are some of my, believe it or not, most comforting smells uh, in my yeah. life yeah. to this day. I can really... Uh, yeah, so I um, those things were there. I always loved music like crazy. And then living in Los Angeles, um, I was close to Hollywood and uh, something that was popular then and probably still is. Um, you could put your kids in, um, you know, um, child labor by signing them up for casting agencies and companies to bring in money for the family. And so right. my one of my brothers and I were... Um, in the Screen Children's Guild. I started working oh, when I was eight years old. Wow. And uh, yeah, and um, 
had just got my social security card and had just learned how to write cursive. So it was, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> Your See career that. path is longer than I thought. <laughs> well, anyway, so that started there, but that got me into the um, uh, production of film and television, which is what I was going into, but my passion for music and all of that. I had a boyfriend in a band and his guitar mm -hmm. player worked in a home studio for Leon Russell. Mm. I was invited over there. I had my epiphany, saw the gear, all that. I said, that's it. Show me how to work this. Dropped out of unit film school the next day and found huh. a recording school and then told my parents what I'd done. And fortunately, they went for it. Uh, so I took the classes, but then I also sought out every opportunity to get into a studio and practice what I was learning in school. Leon Russell allowed me to do that in his home mm -hmm. um, studio. So I really was so myopic about this thing I wanted to do that my whole idea was um, when people would, you know, um, question me on this like girls mm -hmm. don't do this or there's not enough jobs or any of that I my I was so into it that I just say I don't need you to tell me no I need you to tell me how mm -hmm. and if if you're going to oh, tell that's... me no then bye because somebody's doing these things yeah and yeah. and I'm I want to do these things and and uh to me I it never ever occurred to me that gender was an issue mm -hmm. um why my gender would have anything to do with whether I was able to record or not. Yeah. And it, and I still feel that same way. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Can I ask you like, cause I've heard that a little bit of that story before in past interviews as well, that, you know, that you were in film school and then that you had that epiphany towards the music. Oh yeah. What was the epiphany? Why did you go from one and then suddenly know that's what I wanted? What it drew was, you in? Uh, well, um, uh, my boyfriend, Robert, was the lead singer of this band, and this um, guy, Roger, mm -hmm. who was the guitar player of the little 18-year-old kid, was also Leon Russell's engineer, okay. and I was a huge fan of Leon Russell. If any of you don't know who mm -hmm. he is, you've got to Google him and find out, because we could spend hours just talking about him. Yes. Um, fabulous songer and innovator, innovator, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, home studio when nobody else had him and or very few did and mm -hmm. um so i got invited to come over to leon's house to see the studio and i just went what um because i wanted to meet leon and, you know the studio is going to be cool i guess i'd never been in one and um so after school that day i i drove over to encino where his house was and walked up and rang the doorbell and Leon actually answered the door and I almost literally fainted. Oh my God. Yeah. 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 You know, weak in the knees is a real thing. <laughs> and um, uh, so he says, oh, you must be Roger's friend. Come on in. And I walked in to the foyer, but uh, to my right where a dining room is supposed to be, he turned this big old house into a studio like, you know, people do all the time now. Yeah. Um, I so heard cool. 21 tracks, I didn't know it was that many, of these background vocals singing uh, for on this record called Will of the Wisp that they were working on. Mm. And it was like angels were singing. And I looked wow. to the right. I've got goosebumps. Every time I tell this, I just, oh, it's that's cool. just the same. Walked yeah. in and saw the console, saw the tape machine. He had a 40 track Stevens tape machine only three were ever made i mean mm. that's who he was yeah um you know all the opera gear and all of that and it was like the angels were singing to mm. me and it was truly an epiphany it just like wow. you know it it was like that's it that's what my wow. whole life has been wow. meant yeah. to do and so it was no question after that what um, a gift what yes. a gift. Yeah, because yeah, people are a lot of people, we're always looking for something like that. And those of us who actually get it mm -hmm. and you run with it, you, mm -hmm. you go as fast as you can. Yeah. And don't let anything get in your way when when it's like that. I mean, yeah. uh, I had no idea. I wasn't even searching. I was still in school, you know, mm -hmm. I was still studying mm -hmm. and and playing around with, you know, uh, the new uh, technology of videotape recording. 
mm-hmm. you know, and, uh, <laughs> you know, on two inch tape with helio scan and all this stuff, you know, um, it, uh, doing those sort of things. And, um, but everything just, as I, in retrospect, I can see that my whole life kind of was going, oh, wink. funneled and, you right there. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah, yeah. um, and I, uh, I haven't looked back uh, as far as what my passion is, whether uh, the little woman now has a hobby or not. Um, if I'm not working, I'm uh, still doing something audio wise because yeah. it's what I love. And, um, and so it's always part of it, but, but that is the attraction is mm-hmm. um, things end up just coming up um, and I'm ready for them because that's what I love doing. Yeah. And so that's, that's kind of, that was the, what happened though. It was just like getting struck by light, beautiful lightning. I think it's also the approach to things. Cause both of you, like what you have, and I see it in Jason as well, is that, that just like bring it on kind of thing about mm-hmm. life, you know? Um, Cause with, with Jason, the same kind of thing, he's like, yep, let's do this. Anytime you have an idea or like that feels, yep, yeah, I'm there. How can I help? What can we do? Yep. And, and, and then you bring something to the table as well. Jason, did you feel like, um, yeah, how was your path kind of coming to design? Because you kind of grew up towards funneled towards this a little bit too, right? Or yes, did you have yeah. to find it? Like what, what was your path? Uh, well, I, I might still be trying to find it, but, um, the, uh, <laughs> yeah. the merging, the merging that, uh, that I think you're referencing is, uh, yeah, it's certainly something that has, um, had some very uh, unintended consequences with an intentionality and with a lot of uh, risk taking. And you're right, mm-hmm. I, uh, I I jump in and figure it out, you know, and then and fortunately, I get to learn really some great but hard lessons as a result of that. And then I get to apply that to my future efforts in life. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I really do. Um, I do enjoy the fact that uh, you know, growing up, um, being a 1980s punk rocker. Um, Mm -hmm. but at the same time, having a big, you know, level or big sense of empathy, because I was the kind of punk rocker that would, uh, fight the jocks because they would be picking on the, the, you know, the kids that weren't deserving of being picked on. So I would put myself in between them. So Mm -hmm. I would literally physically, um, go after those guys, um, as a result of my, innate uh kind of ability to sense and to be sensitive to things around me and to others so mm-hmm. it was a it's a that schizophrenia uh comment i made earlier obviously i'm, I'm not <laughs> schizophrenic am i no <laughs> yes no no yes undiagnosed uh, but, undiagnosed <laughs> yes uh but i really do believe that um uh there's something about uh duality in life and so mm-hmm. like i could really be that edgy punk rocker but i could be this very sensitive tender person. And I was always jumping back and forth trying to figure out, you know, well, am I at this at this moment or this at that moment? Mm-hmm. Uh, and a lot of times I didn't even know it was just this innate thing that I just processed through and then later figured out, you know, what it might've meant. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so how did you take that, that punk, because I, you know, same kind of thing. Like I, I come from that background of both rock metal, punk rock and funneled so much of it into art, music, design apparel design for me is just that whole world they all connect Mm -hmm. and they're all of us that we are all coming from a creative sense so you know like where did what were you interested in when you were at that that age that punk rock age what were you wanting to do i want to know what city you grew up in yeah uh well oddly enough i grew up how many uh, compton and uh, (laughs) wait that doesn't quite fit (laughs) I'm your long lost lost cousin, Denise. Uh, I'm one of the, oh boy, the Wilson Phillip girls. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I actually have She's got um, a few. Yeah. Uh, no, I I really uh, spent. Uh, I, I was born in uh, Parma, Ohio. Moved to Houston, Texas, at a very young age, and then by the age of about ten, uh, I moved from there to Colorado, and I spent. Um, you know, my formidable years in Colorado and, um, and I like think that's Denver where, or Boulder or Gunnison more or... like, more like Colorado Springs. Uh, Colorado I Springs. actually, oh. so here's the funny thing. I grew up, uh, in national forest, um, where I couldn't see my neighbors. And uh-huh. then I would drive all the way down to, you know, with, to get my school friends. And then we would go to, uh, punk venues and go to, right. you know, hear music and stuff. And I had some friends who were in bands, 
So that was always fun. But that, you know, to be honest with you, the channeling, uh, you know, a lot of punk music uh, that I listened to always was about, you know, stick it to the man, equal mm -hmm. rights. You know, this is, mm -hmm. you know, this mm -hmm. is not fair. Um, right. Kind of, you know, and I think that I can really see a direct link between that mentality, that psychology and philosophy and, and what I do today. I mean, I, absolutely. if I didn't have these blisters on my heels, I'd be wearing my Doc Martens right now. But, uh, <laughs> but seriously, that's, that's, it's really interesting. The, the way that your, uh, these things intentionally band? and intentionally. Who are your favorite Who? bands? Who? Uh, of all time or back then? Well, back, no, back then that inspired you uh, to question. be a punk artist or a, be a punk fan or, right. you know, a, yeah. Who, who uh, really pushed that button? You know, Ian McCabe from uh, Minor Threat, uh, yep. his group was okay. was to me super inspiring. Um, and of course he went on to do Fugazi. Uh, mm -hmm. So I love like his experimental aspects, um, mm -hmm. you know, Bauhaus, uh, the way that they, you know, came and formed together and in what they were trying to do and their the level of intellect and experimental, you know, mm -hmm. aspects of music. I love that. Um, and those are things that, you know, there, there are other bands too, but, um, you know, cause I, uh, I came up, uh, in a very difficult life situation. And mm -hmm. so there was a lot of aggression as well that needed to mm -hmm. come out. And so, right. you know, you've got your DRIs and you've got your, you know, yep. uh, expatriates, uh, my, my friends had a band called blistering body pus, which was really <laughs> fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but they're good they're really there's good there's some crazy I, ones out there is, i'm sure you, that's yeah. a brilliant name isn't it <laughs> they, they are brilliant they still are i keep in touch oh, with the two wow. main guys so yeah write that amazing. Down. yeah yeah we, I, we you know i they never went they never i i think uh pressed a record or did anything like that there but i have you know live uh sign um sound bits and stuff that i could share uh if just to you lenise and, and mm -hmm. michelle okay oh, okay exclusive to oh, us. I've got to else ask for it. <laughs> so yeah, we wow. had a similar we had similar backgrounds. I think, you know, I grew up more in the Bay Area and, and uh, uh, Northern California and then Portland and stuff, too. So I was a West Coast, which is a little different, but but the scenes are similar. But we have those similar things that funnel us into these creative. But that stick it to the man thing. That's also a big mm. piece, that rebelliousness that that just is like um, and being Gen X, we're very much of like we, uh, our bullshitometer is very high. We, you know, we, we have big radar for that. And also that, um, you know, what's the right thing doing the right thing. So, um, yeah. and, and I see that in your work, Jason, coming through with, you know, IDSA and, and working with companies to like bring that same thing that structure is about, you know, the design, the, you know, the designers, the people, the environment, the, you know, really paying attention to the, the pressing issues that are real as opposed to the commercialism. So, well, questioning what is the norm or or why something is knowing to question that mm -hmm. is and that that was stimulated for you guys with you know punk and all of that for me it was um we had i was very young but the summer of love happened when i was a preteener and um so i would sneak out and go to lovins and go hear <laughs> bands play in huge sheds you know uh, sneak out mm -hmm. my bedroom window at night and and um i was going to see these you know uh you know chambers brothers and and um uh, people you know so many different groups the door i saw the doors uh, oh my god yeah, and hendrix and you know i <laughs> you, was supposed to take finals and, and you school, were young seeing and, them they, yeah, yeah i was yeah. I, oh my yeah my poor parents my poor parents <laughs> Really, yeah. I put them through the ringer, but um, yeah, you know, I'm supposed to do finals and I ditched school to go to Devonshire Downs to the Monterey Pops and I yep. saw Hendrix oh, and nice. I saw Spirit and I saw Young Bloods and I saw uh, Janis Joplin and I saw, you oh, know, those man. to me were much more important than what kind of grade I got. Yeah. And, and, um, um, and, oh, and in retrospect, they, they were. I did the right thing. I know mm -hmm. that. I knew it then. Mm -hmm. And yeah. So, uh, but the music back then was also about questioning authority and questioning right. the norms of, you know, when when Kennedy was assassinated, that was the end of the innocence and the right. the beginning of 
uh, what's really going on. That really literally threw the whole world in our country and youth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we started questioning everything because that thing that we were trained to believe was the right thing to do. Dad goes to work, mom stays home and raises the kids and doesn't need a car because she never has to go anywhere. Yeah. And, and my mom was a trapped animal. You know, mm -hmm. she hated that. And the minute yeah. she could get out and get a job, she did and, yeah. and loved it. Never. And, and, you know, I, I saw that, but the, that lifestyle was not realistic. And um, for anyone, nobody can really right. live like that. Whoever yeah. came up with that, it, it was crazy. What? So yeah, that's what, so questioning what the norms are and what people think are appropriate now, um, all of that has never changed as far as uh, I can see. Yeah. And that's the only way innovation happens and changes happen because of the discomfort right. and questioning like what, that's why I'm so compelled to hear and see all the things that you do Jason, because um, it just resonates with me so much. I, when people tell me, well, no, that's just the way it's done. Uh, yeah. It's like, boy, that, them are fighting words. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know? yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. I want to talk about that when we come back from our, our we're going to do some poll questions in a minute, but I want to talk about that because I want to dig into with Jason on your stuff that, you know, the, the emotional intelligence piece too, that I brought in, because you guys are really, you're very much all touching on, um, you know, the, 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 the creative side with the business side that has to happen here. And, you know, I think looking at our, our, a little bit of our childhoods right here, uh, it shows how we grew up in these environments that we balance those things of like needing to be creative and having that, that emotional piece that um, being a highly sensitive person too of, of that, like a, being an HSP or whatnot. And then, um, uh, you know, balancing it with, you know, what's, what's right, you know, and, and kind of having to work in these technical environments and business environments and pushing and saying, no, we, we need to do this. That's, that's kind of been at the heart of, of both of what, what you've done there. And the other thing I want to hold, I want to bring up and mention too, because I wanted to ask you, um, Lenny, when you talk about Kennedy's assassination, this is something I didn't really think about, but shaking up the world like that, a, a mm -hmm. lot like for us, 9-11 did too. But how do you think also COVID just did that for all of us too? So how did what? Uh, that COVID just did that for everybody as well. Oh, gosh, yes. Yeah, absolutely. So, Are you kidding me? Yeah. There, this is a historical event throughout history that will forever be referenced as before COVID and after COVID. Yeah. It, yeah. It's clearly changed yeah. everything because it's global. A lot of people don't even, you know, there's so many minds that just think, oh, you know, somebody's trying to get me and it's a hoax and all that. No, 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 no. Right. This is worldwide. worldwide. This is the first the big world, worldwide. You know? yep. yep. And we are earthlings and, yep. and a pandemic. This is mother earth seems to me saying, all right, you know, um, yeah, you guys yeah. don't know how to take care of me. And so I just have to do what I need to do because I will survive and, mm -hmm. and you may not, but yeah. I need to survive. And so I need to do what I need to do to, mm -hmm. to make that happen. And no, nothing personal, <laughs> um, but, um, and that's yeah. what's happening. We have not been treating our mother well, right. and, um, technically, um, you know, pharmaceutically, chemically, um, we've right. been thinking about our, our conveniences mm -hmm. and not the importance of respecting <laughs> our, is, our world. This is right at the heart of what Jason was talking yeah, about. Well, as that, well. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's why yeah, I was, was so designed. excited to, to yeah. do this with you and to, you know, I, we must continue yeah. this. Yes. Later too. Yeah. Let's continue this also beyond this, but um, uh, we'll continue it now in a few minutes. But what I want to do is kind of quickly go through the poll questions and then move into this next section here. Um, you know, because one of the things I didn't talk about yet are really kind of some of your the challenges and, and successes that you've had in the past. But we can add that into the next section where it leads into, you know, uh, your values and what's important mm -hmm. to you now. 
Um, so we have some poll questions for the audience to kind of break this up a little bit. And I think uh, the team's going to put them up. There we go. We don't get to answer them in the poll, but we get to answer them here. So first one, what is the most, what is most challenging in working as a creative in a business environment? Um, so there's lots of these things like, yeah, like, so I guess people get to choose multiple choice, but if we go through these, you guys can choose creating a brief budget or to a price point, feeling like I have to water down or compromise ideas, uh, being or feeling misunderstood by coworkers, super supervisors, friends, family, balancing right and left brain tasks, like creative and technical tasks, meetings, and all the other things that take over creative time and just working, having to work with people. Cause I know a lot of people who just don't like to work with people. So what would you say is some of the most challenging and they don't even have to be on this list, but you guys, what would you say, you know, working as a creative in that business environment, Jason? Uh, well, you know, I, uh, there's a little bit of everything I think in the questions for me, <laughs> Exactly. It was just like, uh, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. I would, I would, I would go a little bit further out, uh, a little bit bigger picture and just, you know, start to rationalize like, uh, how long, um, I, like my understanding of, of capitalism was it was originally created to be a more of a, uh, equitable construct. It was meant to be something that was, you know, mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. so dominant. Right. So we live in a culture that over, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years, this construct of, of more and more and more has built up into this thing that we live in today that most of us are desensitized to. And so mm-hmm. like, I just think about it and I think, you know, we, um, the, the biggest challenge is that uh, the, the almighty dollar seems to, to rule all things. And it's, I, I have to now look to connect with either my investments, uh, you know, put my money where my mouth is or connecting with uh, small startups who are willing to be agile and willing to try um, you know, to yeah. do things differently uh, because the big corporations just, um, they, they, there's just too much of a machine that was built that can not be, you know, right. unlearned in a way. Right. It's, it, it, it would be impossible. So I don't know so if that answered the question. How would you put that into one, one quick answer on the list? Hot damn it. <laughs> uh, I would say just kidding. You don't profit, know. <laughs> profitability, profitability, um, <laughs> trumps all uh, good intentions. Yep. 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 Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Anything well, else? I, we want to move through these, but what do you think, Linnies? Well, um, yeah. So the, the thing is, is you have to take that profitability and turn it into a positive. And, mm-hmm. and, and Jason has mentioned this in other articles that I encourage people to read that he's done um, about uh you know, um, in, encourage them and make them um, think that uh, making money doing this thing is is uh, going to be good. But actually, what is really happening is positive change is being made um, by that thing that you're offering to do uh, creatively. Because mm. um, you know they. Uh, as he was saying in these um, big corporations or mindsets or even, you know, in studio creative environments, people do things the way they like to do them. And mm-hmm. if it's worked, some people, you know, if it um, don't fix what isn't broken in their head, and mm-hmm. that applies for a lot of things. And that's a good thing often. However, um, there are so many new things coming out and so many important things that need to be changed mm-hmm. and addressed. And that's where uh, industrial design and creativity and um, um, being stimulated and, and questioning things to know to change something and right. then how to um, get those people to do that thing you want them to do. And, Absolutely. Um, so yeah. typically what is a great thing, I read something recently and it could have been in one of your articles, Jason. Um, they said, uh, oh, um, the, the author who wrote Little Prince, The Little Prince. Oh e- yeah. Exantes uh, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Said, if you want to build a boat, 
um, don't just hire a bunch of people to make them come and build the boat. Take those people and, and, and instill the idea in their head how wonderful it would be to sail on the ocean. Yeah. And the right. love of the sea and the ocean. And if you instill that idea in their head, they're going to want to build that boat. Yeah. And that just, boy, that just came up like in the past few days. And yeah. um, that's beautiful. resonated yeah. with all of this. This has just been yeah. so exciting for me, but that is the point. And I find that in the studio when I see there's something I, I want to create and I can see that this thing needs to be done and it's mm -hmm. not, you know, the artist or the band, hopefully they trust me, which I have that going on that it doesn't always happen in big corporations. Mm -hmm. But the idea is to make them understand and feel the joy or the, wow, this, this could work. Let's try it. Mm -hmm. And, um, and mm -hmm. oftentimes it does, but it's up to me to encourage them to yeah. not just think it's their idea, but yeah. um, to encourage them to see what a good idea it is for them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's interesting because as I was letting you guys kind of talk about this and, and we have our answers here and I like to see uh, for that first one, um, we have answers for all of them so we can talk about them, but yeah. Um, you know, if people say feeling, feeling like I have to water down or compromise my ideas. And then the others were big too, because to me, these were all kind of coming out of that idea of, ah, I have a vision and I feel like it's really important and it's coming from the right place and it has really good intentions. And how do I um, get that across? And that's exactly what you're talking about, Lenise, is like you reframe it in a way that really speaks to what, as you would say, Jason, the emotional side, mm -hmm. that emotional connection, right? What's important yeah. to them? Um, how, what does that mean to you? And, um, you know, and so, it's, you know, some of those things, like I think that being fe feeling misunderstood, that was another piece where people often don't know what does the creative person do? What do you do when you go shopping for inspiration? Or what are you, are you drawing? Or how do you like, you know, like, how, they don't know how a creative person gets inspired to do what they do in a lot of ways. Mm. It's like this magic, right? Uh, this, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's, this unsp it's this magic, but they're like, wait, oh, well, what, what are you doing? It's not so easily tangible. And so a lot of times that be feeling misunderstood. Um, and I feel like I've felt like a lot of creatives, you know, musicians, artists, designers often feel that way of like, um, they have this vision, it's really strong, and people don't always t understand where they're coming from. And if they would just kind of get it, they would be behind it too. And so that that selling it to them, that repackaging, that reframing, right, Jason, what do you think? I, yes, absolutely. And uh, I would like to um, acknowledge the fact that I was one of uh, the first, I think, top two or three supporters of a Kickstarter project of mm -hmm. somebody on this panel. Uh, I don't want to use any names, but um, she's hosting. Um, <laughs> she's not one of the panelists. Let me she's see. wearing glasses. Let me see. Oh. Yeah, her picture's not framed or you know frozen. <laughs> but so, you know, the thing is, is what I find very interesting is the whole uh, culture of Kickstarter is, is a rebuttal mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. these questions. Like, you know, corporate is not listening to me. I don't feel comfortable here. And then mm -hmm. this thing comes into existence where if they don't understand me and they don't get me, well, maybe these guys will. And, yeah. uh, and I get to propose to them who, who I am and what I really believe. And so then they go out and they create these ideas and concepts and then the world gets to vote. And, um, yeah. and so I think it's a really interesting uh, time. And, and I remember we had, uh, and I forget his name, the guy that started uh, Kickstarter, but um, you know, crowdsourcing in particular yes. uh, is Just going to be, of it's, that. Yeah. it's going to be its own form of like commerce and, and, you know, in the not too distant future uh, because of how much it's taken yeah. over a lot of what we do. So, yeah. Yeah. People really want to feel empowered in that. And it's interesting. I was looking at the next two poll questions. We won't spend a lot of time on them. We'll go through them because they're important, but um, what are the top three most important skills uh, working as a creative professional? And the top one was having confidence in my abilities and creations, you know, believing oh. in yourself, and I love to see that people chose that, um, the ability to collaborate and knowing who I'm creating for, um, you know, like knowing like, who am I making this for? Who am I trying to connect 
to. And that ties also into um, what do you love m- most about working as a creative, you know, as, as a creative professional, the ability to play at work, do what I love, and the feeling to really make a difference in the world and people's lives. Mm. Um, and things that will exist in the world, you know, like, like um, that will live, you know, and I think these all speak very much to um, how people are feeling now about that meaning doing what you love, creating something that is existing in the world that's useful and making a positive, I I should say a positive difference in the world. Um, Ultimately, we all kind of really want that, right? So I, yeah, I think we do. I just don't think a lot of people, um, well, earlier, they they didn't think it was okay to do that. Um, I think more and more now, um, people are encouraged to think like that. That that yeah. um, mindset of work all your life at the same place, doing the same thing. And then whether you want to quit working or not, um, if you loved your job, you've still had to. Yeah. Um, but if you didn't love your job, you would work, you'd spend the majority of your life working at something that didn't make you happy and right. then go home and try to make yourself happy on the evenings or the weekends or whenever your time was off and say, well, when I retire, I'll, I'll be happy then. Right. Um, yeah. And, right. and I'll be, be able to afford to be happy. And the reality of that is, has proven to be um, not so much um, yeah. Yeah. for a lot of people. If you didn't enjoy your job or what you were doing, then um, and then you retired and, and a lot of people um, didn't have that that joy that they thought they were going to have when they did retire. A lot right. of people did. And that's great. That's why there's so many different people and so many different things yeah. to do. And so many people who are appropriate for some jobs and okay. others are the perfect person for another job. Right. And, and right. all you of know- those matter. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Lenise, uh, just a little side note, when you said about, you know, uh, going home and trying to find happiness, I remembered that I believe uh, that, and, and you can look this up if you want, you'll never find it out because I'm making it up as we're talking, but okay. that's <laughs> the Manhattan, the cocktail of my choice came mm-hmm. out as a result of not being happy at work and going home and trying to find happiness. Okay, well, see. And a little go. bit of happiness and a little bit. It's just a, <laughs> in a little just, glass. you know, just yeah. a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. Well, and I think, I think, you know, we've been doing a lot of talking about this in terms of also like health and healing and stuff like that. And, and, uh, you know, feeling also that people spent, have spent so many years um, because we just did an episode also on mental health um, last May for mental health month, where we talked a, a bit about this. Um people spend years and years doing things they don't love and thinking that they're going to retire or whatnot to then find that their health is compromised. Their mental health is compromised. There are lots of things have been compromised that they weren't expecting. Um, and that's something that we're really starting to address a bit more, especially since COVID hit and the, uh, the mental health issues have dropped high, uh, you know, really ratcheted up too. Um, but I don't know if either of you want to you know, speak to that a little bit. Well, I, one thing that popped in my head when you brought that up, uh, those issues can come up with, even if you are doing that thing that you love. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's right. not um, uh, just for working at something you hate, and that's why you have mental health issues. You right. can um, be doing that thing you absolutely love, and just because you love it doesn't mean it's, you know, uh, a smooth ride, all of that. Right. The fact that you have chosen right. to do what you love uh, is a challenge right there. And you have to fight often to maintain that if, uh, and um, so uh, doing that thing you love can often be a lot harder than working for someone else who tells you what to do. And then you can go home and say, you know, my boss, I don't like my boss. Well, right. when you are working for yourself, <laughs> um, you have to, <laughs> You want to like your boss and <laughs> and your you want your boss to have your best interests and um you and if you don't like that. your boss you can't just leave yeah and well my, uh, mine's an asshole by the way <laughs> <You're right. laughs> mine mine can turn on a dime that's the thing that uh, right? my boss does a lot you know i have to like bring her back sometimes um 
Yeah, that, what, that's why I make lists. Um, <laughs> but what I want to encourage more than anything is to to um, like what you said before about um, being happy and doing what you want. Um, and is uh, our life is only this long. It really is. We are not immortal and bulletproof. And it's this long and you've got to make it matter. Mm -hmm. And um, I have to say, I had the great fortune of uh, having cancer when I was young. Mm -hmm. And um, and, after, and it was right after that Blondie record that's mm -hmm. sitting right there. And mm -hmm. thank you. Um, yeah. uh, the day I, I got cancer two and a half records before the Blondie album happened and I knew it was coming and I just, it was stomach cancer and I um, wanted to, uh, I knew I wanted that record and I was going to do that record regardless of anything. Wow. And um, fortunately an artist I was working with had cancer and, uh, but she'd gone holistically. And so she got me with her doctors. So yeah. i got well, um, but uh during the Blondie record, I, Debbie Harry was making me, you know, um, brown rice and vegetables. I, I had yeah. to go this whole thing. The day after I mastered the record, I drove down to Mexico and the doctors down there said, quit your job or die. And, wow. and here I had just done this thing, you know, and, but they were right because this, the circumstances around doing that thing that I loved yeah. almost killed me because there were so many extraneous other things besides just being in the studio recording art and these great people if there were many many other things that were unhealthy and created dis-ease yeah. in my life yeah. and yeah. including a ridiculous lifestyle of you know i'll mm -hmm. sleep when i'm dead and you know roscoe's mm -hmm. chicken and waffles in one hand and <laughs> You know, and, and you just right. can't do that. And so my body did like Mother Earth did for the pandemic and said, if you're not smart enough to do this, I have to step in. And, mm -hmm. and so the doctor said, quit your job or die. So I did and got well, um, moved down to the Caribbean and did boat deliveries. And wow. Yeah, and for a lot of it. Just changed, got totally out of the music business, whatever, and saw... Um, got rid of that stress, the yeah. imbalance. I had imbalance, and that yeah, was, yeah. and that's really important. Balance is important. You can work hard, but you need to reward yourself hard as well in a mm -hmm. in a loving way. And um, loving. So way. I was able to come back, but going into post production. But the the lesson I learned was I could die of this or get hit by a truck tomorrow. What am I doing? with this time that I have here on this planet mm -hmm. in regards to me, you know, being my own little um, individual um, personification of the universe here. Uh, who, what am I doing and what can I do to make it matter? Because um, I've just been given the gift of, I get to start again. Wow. You know, I've got, yeah, a, awesome. I got that second chance and um that I had to work for, but I did my mantra when they said to, you know, no animal products, no this or that. And I, I would just go do this or die, do this or die. And I didn't mm -hmm. want to die yet. So that was um, the thing. And, That's and the big. gift was, I make every day matter. And um, awesome. for whatever that means yeah. to me, because if it's meaningful to me, then it should be uh, good for everybody else. You know, yeah. that's, that is what makes it meaningful. Yeah. So um, that's, that's a key right there. Yes. You starting with you. I mean, there's so much of it's not so much that, you know, giving, giving, like, I'm, I'm making all this meaning for other people. You start with you, you start with taking care of you and that and radiates right. out. Well, if you, if you don't love your, yourself and take care of yourself and have confidence in yourself and that thing that, Boy, I really love doing this, but I sh but I should take this job or I should do this. No, 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 no. I'm 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 really going to encourage all of you youngins out there, uh, <laughs> or anybody, um, do that thing that you love and and have faith in in that thing because you were put here with a 
special set of chemicals and in you know protons and neutrons and in whoever you are is uniquely you and mm. that and something may make sense to you there's something in you that you love whatever yeah. it is it's it's gonna there's somebody else who will also have that interest you've got a support group somewhere and um right. Uh, but or just the fact that you follow your own heart and what is authentic to you you know that you can right. sleep at night yeah <laughs> right you know i right. i'd like to add to that yeah. if i can because to me it's uh <clears throat> a uh, an anglican bishop who happens to be a very good friend of mine um once said that uh, we were designed to live extraordinary lives not ordinary lives and um, and then there was a, mm. a, a Jewish uh, rabbi who once said, life begins at the end of your comfort zone. And I listen to those mm -hmm. two things and I try to merge them together because um, I am guilty of falling into the patterns of, of uh, cell phone addiction and, um, you know, uh, TikTok and infinity roll and all that kind of stuff. And it really mm -hmm. uh, it messes with my mental health in a way because mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. it's, it's distracting me from that that original um you know message of i i'm supposed to be i'm here on earth because i i can live this extraordinary life why am i settling for this thing over here you know right. and um but the distractions that i fill my life up with don't give me the opportunity well i don't take the opportunity to really know um who i really am in the midst of that because it's just too mm -hmm. easy and maybe my maybe my you know two manhattans a night well actually one in the morning <laughs> one at night uh, maybe that is part of the reason I'm not going to go there though, but mm -hmm. it, it is there. I am guilty of, of distracting myself from what the truth really is. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes that's absolutely necessary. It's like taking a little holiday away. you got to take that break. Um, just don't overdo it. And, and uh, who has it, uh, uh, who said, you know, anything in excess is a bore. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh -huh. um, and also what comes up for me is I have to have a certain, a certain structure just because I'm doing that, you know, it, people have a misconception that, oh, I'm just following my heart and I'm following that thing that I want to do. Boy, it, it, to be successful at it requires a lot of structure. Yeah. Um, but mm -hmm. structure that you create for yourself to get the results that you want to have. Right. And right. that's where it's okay to follow that structure um, where, you know, sometimes if, if you're in a work environment where somebody gives you a structure that mm. um, doesn't resonate with you or your team, you as a team member or you as um, working for that person, um, I'm, I'm a big believer in saying, you know, I don't think I'm the right person for this job. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and I say that creatively, uh, when artists come to me or they, they want me to do that, you know, I can do analog records. That's, I just did one all, you know, I can record the tape. I can mix the tape. I can do that. A lot of people don't know how to do that more and more, you know, mm -hmm. because, right. Um, and so sometimes people come to me to want to do that. Well, um, it's important that, we have that connection and can be on a team and i'm passionate about their project and mm -hmm. love their music mm -hmm. or film or whatever because um it's a very tight relationship and if yeah. i don't feel an emotional bond with them or this music right. and do it just because it's a job somebody wants to pay me to do something if i don't like it I'm going to be so miserable right. and I'm going to make them miserable. They're going to be miserable and they deserve somebody who is absolutely ex as excited about their project as they are. I, that, I think that, yeah, that speaks to, there's a comment here and I think you just spoke right to it, which is, you know, where does the line lay for you when it comes to taking a time away from your craft versus spending too much time away from it, meaning um, that, well, that, that, that speaks more to, uh, I guess, towards um, choosing how you're spending your time with it. Right. But mm -hmm. I think there is that, like how you're choosing to spend your time, you know, in the craft, outside the craft. And when you're doing the craft too, like who you're spending your time with so that it's meaningful time. 
So I just noticed that comment there. And that's, I thought that was interesting. Like, where does that line lay where you kind of find the balance? So I think they, our listeners are wondering about that balance for you guys. Take that, Jason. Uh, well, I guess I have my ideas, but I'm, I'm talking too much. You talk. Oh, well, listen, awesome. you're not talking too much. I, I'm, I'm receiving everything you're saying. So oh. it's, it's amazing. I, I guess for me, um, I, I don't want to sound, uh, you know, uh, too heady or too philosophical, but to me, what's really important is linguistics and in language mm -hmm. and what is the language that's being used in that question you know and it's mm -hmm. like and then it makes me want to to go deeper and say well what was life like back whenever what were they thinking were they asking the same questions you know and how does that apply to me and i what i come to very often is that the balance is is really the question is almost like well what is balance and and why is it who who placed the importance on the need to have balance, right? There and then you I have to right. think, I have to think about myself and think about, well, okay, but I do need to balance, right? So mm -hmm. I'm always in this uh, duality again, there's that, that term, uh, where it's like, I, I want to say self grace is really important, like understanding mm -hmm. that I'm going to fuck up, I'm going to, I'm going to do things wrong, I'm going to mess, you know, I'm going to hurt people, whatever the case may be. And you know what, I'm still a good person. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know if enough people really take the time to understand who they are versus how they wound up being, you know, kind of construct. But yeah. And then and then the balance is, you know, knowing that maybe for a season, I just have to push, push, push. Um, and there is not there is no such thing right. as a balance. Well, well that's that's the balance, the balance right? Yeah. It, yeah. It shifts. Yeah. So that, that line shifts depending on what it is, what what you have to prioritize mm -hmm. um, at this time, you know. I've got a deadline for this that I've agreed to. A lot of it, so much of it is being uh, accountable and responsible for the decisions you make. Mm -hmm. And even when you screw up, you, um, you know, uh, you, I don't think anybody intentionally wants to make mistakes or mm -hmm. hurt people or any, if you do, not. then that's, I'm, I'm sorry you're that person, but um, yeah. typically- But he's no longer president, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No names mentioned, um, but we all know. Yeah. Right. Um, so um, we have to learn learn from right. those mistakes. True. I mean, you know, that sounds like yeah. a cliche, but boy, oh boy, um, I'm the only way to be able to forgive myself when I've done something that I'm so sorry I did um, is to learn to not do it again and mm -hmm. to and um, learn from that. Also. Another thing I wanted to mention too is about um, one of the greatest ways, this went from way back, how do you know what it is you want to be a part of? One of the mm. best ways to learn is to recognize what you don't want in something. And Absolutely. so when those, those to me and other people have said it and I, and I embrace this idea of those people who have caused me extreme pain and sorrow and whatever the conflict is or the, the, the things shown me things in my life that I have been really awful for me. I look at them as my greatest teachers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, as you said I about cancer. Them. Yeah. 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 And I thank them for the lessons that I learned. And so much of it is about what I don't want for me in my life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's what I learned from them. That's I don't want to be treated like that. That's big. Uh, yeah. I don't want to physically hurt myself like that. I don't, uh, whatever that thing is, I don't want to yeah. be around toxic people like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, what they want in life is not what I want in my life. And I do have choices. Yep. Yes. <laughs> uh -huh. I learned that from my my sweet little mama. May she rest in peace. She used to always awesome. say, um, uh, we'd say, Mom, how's it going today? And she was in her 90s. She goes, uh, are you having a good day? She goes, every day is a good day. I have choices. That's awesome. That's a great, about that's that? a great thing. To, I want to, I want to kind of cap that off with that because that's awesome. I was also going to say to what Jason was saying too, is that um, like, you know, Every day is a good day. I have choices. That is something to take away. And another thing like to what Jason was saying is my, my martial arts teacher would always say to, to the balance thing, 
everything in moderation, including moderation. Mm. Yes. So <laughs> sometimes you just gotta, you know, do that. So um, I want to take this real quick and, and um, there's a couple things I want to make Nothing. sure we cover in the time that we have here. Um, just for a few, just for a couple minutes here, working in a male dominated field, because mm -hmm. all of us do, right? Yeah, um, I hate yeah. It. <laughs> so tell us about that, Jason. Well, let me tell you something, sister. I, <laughs> I am so tired of apologizing for being a man, being a white man, being a middle-aged fat white man, um, and being in a leadership yeah. role. And it is really hard because um, I, I, I do believe men are pigs um, to a certain extent, right? Mm -hmm. I think that uh, if we go back in history where, you know, from the beginning of mankind, it seems like there were periods, um, especially around the industrial revolution and beyond where women just did not have a voice, it did not matter. And those constructs, uh, even like when we talk about policing and how that originally mm -hmm. came about and the way it was meant to suppress the black, you know, slaves and community, those things are things that we don't think about today, but they are part of our thinking. They're part of our, part mm -hmm. of our biases. So, mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I am, I think we think so more about meeting. them now than we have for a while. I just want, I, I, well, I don't agree totally. with you on that one. Yeah. We totally. do think a lot about that now. Mm. Thank we goodness. have to, and more and we, more. but we, we have to, because we have a younger generation that's really willing to create the change versus those of us who are addicted to complacency, you know? Yeah, 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 definitely. And I, I mean, you know, Linise, we talked about that. You, you started off with what, you know, not really seeing why there should be any limitation for, for you, you know, as a woman in your industry. And I know, um, you know, in industrial design, now I'm an apparel designer, uh, you know, by, by education, which is very female oriented. It's an interesting thing, but industrial design, who my business partner, um, she is in industrial design and she was one of the only women in her program. One of maybe two, I think, something like that of all these men as well. And that's where Jason, your field is. Um, She's amazing, by the way. Uh, absolutely. And, and the thing is, is that we love, the thing is, is that what we found as women in these fields is that we love to play and, and work in these fields that were more, you know, had been more masculine, but we weren't any less masculine ourselves. It's just, we liked playing with the boys. We wanted more women to do that. We liked the equality. We liked the mix. You know, we liked doing that piece. Um, so, you know, what are your, just your experiences? I mean, you know, Linnie's your first woman to win a, you know, get a platinum album, you know, like. And, and that's ridiculous. How come? <laughs> But you did it. It's, Thank you. Well, I did it. No, I'm saying how yeah. come it took right. that long? Right. And yeah. there are other women who have done other things and that have been finally, you know, one thing that this organization, Sound Girls, that I'm involved in, that I just, all you women out there in the music business or just want to be inspired, uh, it yeah. should keep it music business oriented, but um, it, it, they empower, 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 and Carrie Kives um, brings yeah awareness to all these other women and i do it as well as much as i can in the past and women who have been significant in our creative industries and that didn't get any recognition um at all no album credits no mm -hmm. nothing and it took all the way up until the 80s for for me to have that happen. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that's that I'm just, I just think that's wrong. But and Lenise, we're still fighting it now. In yeah. yeah. But I think Lenise in your situation, let's just, you know, let, let's just ask the question of, you know, what if the universe ordained you as that person for a reason? You know, what if, what if from the beginning of time there, there were, we were waiting for you to come along to do this because <laughs> well. it would lead into other things. If you're living an extraordinary life, that could very well be a potential. If it's an ordinary life, then, you know, scratch that concept. Right. We live by well, example, you know, I, yeah. I have to admit um, my uh, upbringing. Well, just who I was, um, I'm the youngest of six kids and, and living in that environment. But my mom, I was the last kid home, and I just as have to say, you know, before I went off to school, when I was like three and four years old, and my mother uh, was home alone with me in the morning before the other kids came home from school, and 
she would walk around that house and she'd and have me help her clean. She goes, when you grow up, you're going to have to um, clean house, scrub toilets and make three meals a day. And she would go walk around and I would follow her and I'd go, no, I don't want to do that. Oh, and, wow. um, and I didn't, she was so trapped by that. That isn't what she thought she was getting into when she got married. Wow. And that's what turned out. That was yeah. her little prison. And yeah. I got it right that away. An and, and, but also that I've always questioned everything. I don't uh, accept what people say uh, mm -hmm. without thinking about it or researching it or, um, you know, uh, just accepting it for the, the sake of it, you know, and we could go into that's all a gift sorts of things that's but, a gift she got, gave you by doing well that. but yeah, I, yeah. I was like that already I yeah. was like that already and um you know in in kindergarten they wanted little girls to play house and play right. balls and yeah stuff. I never wanted to do that yeah. I wanted to paint yeah. I always wanted to paint and work with yeah. the play yeah. the and do all those yeah. things yeah. and I had no interest at all it's well this is do this it is, now because it makes me happy uh, yeah, but yeah. um, but that's it. It's not yeah. my. Goal. This is this is where I think also coming back to the punk rock thing, you know, because I think yeah. um, the punk rock thing it was always very much. I mean, there's other facets of of the whole punk scene where it wasn't very um, e equal, and there were a lot of issues and and their problems too. But a lot of us from that were really about that equality. And I'm going to kind of tie. There's a couple questions we have here, and there's I'm going to tie one of these into this. You know, Jason, like because it's coming from that punk rock world. Um, one of the questions here is, uh, did Jello Biafra make an impact? And, you know, there's that piece. And then like, kind of, he's coming from that world. He's still from that world. He's very uh, rebellious and, and outspoken about that. Yeah. Um, Dead Kennedy is that? Uh, one of my all-time mm -hmm. favorites as well, yeah. for sure. Yeah. You know, uh, to me, the, um, uh, well, Jello in particular, you know, was one of the few that uh, was able to hit mainstream TV and, and discuss mm -hmm. his philosophy and discuss, you know, the, the, his view and his perception of what life is and, um, and you know, the, the issues that go with that. So I, I love that. I love that he was so vocal. I love that he was so articulate and smart. Um, Bad Religion is also a really great mm -hmm. example. Um, the lead singer uh, is, it, it doesn't he have tenure at like uh, Berkeley or something? And, mm -hmm. you know, he's, but mm -hmm. the words, yeah, the words true. are very influential. They're very well put together and very specific to a message. And so uh, mm -hmm. the punk rock aspect of, of all that, that, you know, I've been exposed to and what the impact it's had on me is the fact that um, uh, it's, it's given me something like a tribe, I suppose, that I can connect to that. Yeah. Uh, is, and then within that community, we found solace, we found, you know, a, a level of comforting and, and whatnot. And then, in the springs we would go out to uh you know the punk rockers would go out and look for um the uh the air force cadets and try to beat them up so it was a little weird <laughs> it was yeah. there's that duality again yeah it well. was a very renegade it's very renegade very rebellious yeah. and so it can go in all sorts of different directions but but the um, music had a, had a message and a statement and yeah. There was passion and wanted to make a difference. And um, yet like Henry Rollins and Black Flag mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, yes. uh, and, and he's help. still yes. one of my favorite people. And yep. yeah. um, that's the important thing about the music that uh, the different eras and what music can do and the effect it has on us yeah. to yeah. Um, take that path that we want to take. Mm -hmm. And that somatic yeah. effect too. Yes. yes. Yep. I mean, yes. That's yeah. so yep. huge. Yep. That's a big piece to it. You know, um, you know, kind of taking this into the last few minutes, uh, uh, we've got about 10 more minutes here and, um, you know, moving that, like we're talking about this already and talking about kind of pro, you know, people, planet, like the things that are important, emotional intelligence and kind of how COVID has shifted things. Um, yeah, let's, let's kind of, kind of work in there. Um, we're already headed in that direction here and talking about that. But one of the questions here that somebody put in is how do you overcome fear and anxiety? Um, and that's kind of, kind of coming into the emotional, the EQ section here. How do you overcome fear and anxiety? Now, I'm not sure they didn't say uh, um, in anything in particular, 
but um, in a creative world, uh, how, how would you guys address that question? would love to collaborate with the panel, they said. Um, I'm just, the one of the best things that works for me, and again, my mama told me this, um, shift the energy with what your mind's thinking and start counting your blessings. Um, it not, and I'm not being religious about that. I'm just saying, thank you that I have good eyesight. Thank you that I can walk around. Thank you that I have a brain that I can apply to something. Thank you that I have a bed I'm sleeping in. Thank you. Just once you start, oops, sorry, once you start <laughs> doing that, test, test, test. Um, you're, all good. Uh, you're it's, a, it's about an energy shift because mm -hmm. you will, whatever you're focusing on, your energy is focusing on, is that if that's what's going to grow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yes. so if you, yeah. you know, you start going, wow, look at those flowers. Look at this. That's what moving to the Caribbean, you know, that was a drastic move for cancer, but I got to tell you, um, just basic things, stopping and looking at gorgeous flowers and, yeah. Um, yeah. and being grateful for the simplest mm -hmm. things. Um, you know, you don't have a flat tire. You don't, if my car works, um, right. all, all of those things are blessings. Um, mm -hmm. because when they go away, then you're in, in trouble. So if you're focusing on negative things, again, you have choices and, you can physically, you know, you can physically feel the energy shift. The more you do that, even if you have to make a list, even if you've seen it into your yeah. message thing on your phone, yeah. um, that's what helps with anxiety and fear. Because yeah. fear is con somebody else is controlling you with that fear. Yeah. Um, trusting yourself um, fear goes that away confidence. because mm -hmm. they, then that, there's no control. When, when fear is key, then you've lost control. Yep. Yep. It, what do you say? If I can, I'd love to add to that. Um, Please. You know, fear, uh, this ties in, I don't want to be broken record, but to me, it, it um, there's always um, an emotional component to, to every touch point, to everything that we're talking about. Uh, yeah. To me, it's not a bad thing to, again, start to question, why am I thinking the way I'm thinking? Like who determined that this is important and, and mm -hmm. what was the language that was used as a result? And then right. then go back, you know, go to the Cuban crisis, you know, the missile crisis and how right. people were digging up, you know, their yards and putting in these shelters and all this stuff. Like you look at um, all the advertising around us and how so much yeah. of it is fear-based. If I'm not right. good enough, look, at, look good enough or have this. Yeah. I mean, it's like all of these things every single day, every moment that we are all the news is so technology and fear inducing, you know, storm yeah. watch 2000 and it's okay. drizzling outside. It's you pounding know, you with not... fear and your anxiety is just going, exactly. you know, yeah, right. Right. And so why, why, like, what would it look like if we were to just take a step back and then just reevaluate that whole system and, and be like, well, if it's everywhere, um, I'm not going to yeah. escape it. So it now becomes this thing where I need to look at myself and, and invest in myself to know whether or not, you know, can I, can I change the way that I think? Can I change some mm -hmm. of these dynamics? And is it really that bad? And guess what? It's actually not a bad thing to just mm -hmm. sit in your fear and anxiety and embrace it and accept it and say, that's part of who I am and, you know, see what happens from there. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Don't be afraid of it. Yeah, moving into your anxiety. Uh, some of us have been having conversations about that, moving into that place and away from that fear, but into your anxiety where that place is for learning and whatnot. Um, in the last uh, four minutes that we've got here, I just wanted to hear then post COVID now, in, well, I can't even say post COVID yet. No, no, you can't. Um, COVID, since, since COVID has hit and changed the world, um, what are your last kind of, you know, your imparting words for people in terms of, you know, what you've learned and the hope that you would give to send people off with to our next, till our next conversations. So. Well, Denise, do you want to take this one? Well, I'll, 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 go, <laughs> I, I, I'll go after. <laughs> yeah, I'll start with the number one thing I think of many of us, um, realized was how important the people are in our lives right. and all that other stuff um, doesn't matter 
nearly what your relationships with other human beings. We are not islands here. We are all earthlings. We are all part of this world. Every single one of us, you, you get underneath our skin and we're all the same. Right. And, um, and we are here to interact with each other. And I think that was brought the most when somebody was isolated at home in their apartment or home by themselves, um, that resonated for the first time more than anything, our relationships with people we took for granted. And so um, I hope all of us now will keep that relationship, um, still keep, make that the most important thing, whether it's your friends and family that you know now, but the entire world, everybody has suffered because of this. Mm -hmm. And everybody who is left is going to survive. And we have more than just being earthlings in common now, we have survived a pandemic or when it's yeah. over, we have so many things in common and yeah. embrace what we have in common and make the world a better place. And I know that sounds so corny, but I've no, be that, we be are that the change world. you want to see in the world. <laughs> we are all, the future. Yeah, all the cliches. Be that change we you want to see world. in the world. You want somebody to be nice to you, be yeah. nice to somebody back. To them. Kindness. Yeah. Hi, you want yes, to others. The greatest thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. What'd you add to that, Jason? Um, I'm going to try my best to end on a positive note. Um, <laughs> but I will say, I will say that um, uh, human nature, you know, has also uh, to some degree predetermined what our future is going to be because our behaviors um, that were before COVID were all of our lives. COVID comes and interrupts something and says, you know, and then we go back, we desire during COVID to go back to the way things were. Mm -hmm. And my hope is that we, uh, as Lenise perfectly said, you know, don't take things for granted, connect to the, the people that you love more than you've mm -hmm. ever had before. Um, and, and just be self-aware because it's, it will be easy for us to want to go back into old patterns but you're right. This is now a chance for us to look at things in a different light, and yeah. to look at a to look at life in a way that could really um, bring us to that er, that level of living extraordinary, not ordinary. Mm -hmm. You said two words in the very beginning um, that I wrote down immediately, and I want to repeat: is fresh um, prints. <laughs> you deconstruct and you relearn. Yes. yes. Those behaviors can yeah. be deconstructed, can be can evaluated, be. and you Beautiful. pick up the pearls and yeah. you re remove the things that don't work and you yeah. relearn new behaviors. We are capable of change. Yes, beautiful. Positive. We can do that. Just yeah. because we behaved like we that before, yeah. that the reason we got into this is because those behaviors didn't work. Right. Right. And that's, I think, you know, to end this on a, on a positive note, you know, cause I think you both did as well that I, we did that here. Just, I mean, we could talk for hours more, I know, um, but you know, I think there's so many, we share we, connecting with people and sharing these ideas and, and just uh, sharing our experiences and sharing our compassion and our passions. Um, that's why we're doing this. That's why I brought structure back to do this um, and to connect people and bring these ideas up. And so uh, thank you. You brought, you all brought a lot of, a lot of um, gifts and, and pieces of takeaways here, you know, just well, in this conversation. It was purely selfish on my part because I want everybody <laughs> amazing, <laughs> wonderful and people I want to hang yeah. out with do wonderful, positive things with. So yes. uh, that's why I'm encouraging you because I want you to be those people so I can enjoy you <laughs> and I can enjoy the world. <laughs> I get it. I think I became a designer just because I wanted, people, you a hug, to, I wanted people to look better. You know, this is it's selfish reasons are great reasons when they're well-intended, you know what I mean? So, yes. so great thank work. you. Yeah. Thank you both your big hearts, big spirits and big energy. And just that, that, you know, 
just your smiles and being here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michelle, for doing yes. this. And structure yeah. is yeah. such an Good important word. word and an idea. And thank you, Jason. Yeah. And thank you, Karen. Uh, yeah, thank you, Karen, for and, 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 and Reg. And Reg. Thank you, guys. And this awesome. has just been wonderful. I'm, I'm high for the rest of the day, at least. And thank you to all the people watching and chatting and yes. uh, stuff in the chat. So before we sign off, I was just going to remind everybody here, there's three dots at the bottom of your chat. If you click that and say save chat, everything on that chat bar you'll get. And then we will have this also recorded for the YouTube channel. And I will get that up shortly. But um, mm. in, until the, our next conversation, have a great rest of the day and um, keep up the great work. And thank you all for being here. Yes. So. Thank you so much for joining us. This is yes. really important. Thank We're you. nothing without you. This would be nothing. <laughs> it would be fun amongst us, but we it would just be us three, but that's something. Yeah, right? but, well, <laughs> if you're everything out there, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you all. All right. Signing off till the next one. Thank you all Bye. for being here. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Mm -hmm.